from notable historic sites where it's rumored restless spirits resulting from violent accidents still wander the countryside, to entire regions soaked in blood and roamed by the ghosts of prospectors and miners and those seeking fortunes that death stole from them long ago. Are you sure you're ready to brave our picks for some of the most haunted places in the Yukon Territory? Number 5. The Yukon Legislative Building the Yukon Legislative Building, which is located off of 2nd Avenue out of Whitehorse in the Yukon, is a site playing host to the bulk of the Yukon Territory's governmental departments, which includes the Yukon Legislative Assembly. Historically, predating its relocation to Whitehorse, the Territory's legislature would meet in Dawson City out of the Yukon Territorial Government Admin Building from 1907 until 1953, after which operations were moved to Whitehorse and were subsequently and respectively hosted out of the old post office, the federal building, and later out of the Lynn building off of Steel Street. In 1976, while the legislature would move to its current location in the new Territorial Admin Building, following the passing of the Yukon Elections Act in 1977, the Territorial Council would be replaced by our current Legislative Assembly, which, on a side note, was elected for the first time the following year through the 1978 Yukon General Elections. The Yukon Legislative Building remains open and in operation into the present, accommodating its various departments while providing several touring options. While no one is exactly sure who or what haunts this prominent government campus, a range of inexplicable activity has been experienced by staff, authorities, and visitors to its bounds, with reports including disembodied voices or music heard from empty spaces, footsteps detected in vacant halls, and encounters with ominous shadowy figures that sometimes stalk the living at great lengths. Several have told of doors slamming on their own and sometimes dangerously close to fingers, while others of the sensations of being tapped or patted by an unseen hand. And a mysterious, misty apparition has been observed drifting about after dark, some say as if it's forever searching for someone or something it couldn't find in life. Number 4, and I swear we didn't do this on purpose, the Dredge Number 4 National Historic Site. The Dredge No. 4 National Historic Site, which is located off of Bonanza Creek Road, around 13 kilometers south of the Klondike Highway, out of Dawson City in the Yukon, is a significant wooden hold bucket line sluice dredge boasting the title of being the largest wooden hold dredge in the whole of North America. Historically, in 1912, this particular sluice dredge was first designed under the Marion Steam Shovel Company and was purposed to mine placer gold off the Yukon River. And a year later, through May of 1913, the Canadian Klondike Mining Company would take over dredge operations. Following 11 years of continued dredging in 1924, dredge number 4 would cut its way to the Boyle Concession, where it would sink, and by 1927 it would be refloated and would be aimed at Hunker Creek, where it could produce a jaw-dropping 800 ounces of gold per day. In 1940, the old dredge would cease operations for a time until it was fully reconstructed under the Yukon Consolidated Gold Corporation off Bonanza Creek, where it would resume operation by 1941, and after which it would work its way downstream along one end of the valley and subsequently back up the other before its decommission in 1959, when it was literally left right where it sat. In 1970, the dredge was acquired under Parks Canada. It would be excavated in 1991, and in 1992 it would be transferred to its current site where it remains open to visitors to this day, offering both guided and self-guided touring options. Chillingly, this weathered dredge is rumored to harbor an unidentified number of restless spirits tied to its past, being both those of the men who worked aboard it and also of the poor souls claimed in various accidents, and those frequenting the site have reported a range of terrifying supernatural activity, including extreme cold spots felt in adverse weather, encounters with shadowy figures that stalk about, and the phantom sounds of the dredge in full operation, as if some semblance of its form is continuing its intended work from just beyond the veil. Rather disturbingly, blood-chilling shrieks, screams, and cries for help have been heard from within after dark, and though this commotion has been investigated both by staff and even by authorities numerous times, no source has ever been uncovered. Additionally, several informal investigations of the expanse have yielded high EMF levels, clear EVP recordings, and orbs in strange forms in both photography and video. Lastly, eerie phantom glows have been observed floating around the dredge site both late at night and early in the mornings, while a violent and spontaneous banging noise has been known to startle any nearby at random moments. Number 3. The Westminster Hotel 
the Westminster Hotel, or more affectionately, the Pit to locals, and located off of 3rd Avenue out of Dawson City in the Yukon, is a historic lodging recognized as the romance capital of the territory, and is one of the few businesses in D.C. that remains open year-round. Historically, construction of Westminster's accommodating structure building would begin through the early 1900s, with the expanse opening its doors through the 1930s, and over its years, portions of the campus would host the Klondike Thawing Machine Company offices, a shop, a boarding house, a diner, an ice cream parlor, and later and most popularly, a hotel and bar. In 1950, this hotel was purchased under Fabian and Eileen Selwa, who would manage operations up through the 1990s after after which the business was purchased by a group of local interests and eventually was acquired under one Duncan Spriggs. During his time as owner, Spriggs would work diligently until the Westminster was recognized as a venue with the best live music in the territory, and later, in 2010, he would pass the operation on to Paul McDonough, who has since worked tirelessly on a host of modernizations, renovations, and upgrades. The Westminster Hotel remains open into the present, offering moderately priced but lavish accommodations, live entertainment from their lounge, and as much drink as one can hold from their iconic tavern. While most of the Westminster's many purported spirits remain unidentified, local legends claim the bulk of infestations are related to past visitors and employees since deceased, and those frequenting its bounds have reported extreme cold patches and sudden temperature drops, odd knocking, scratching, and commotion heard from visitors vacant rooms, and tapping detected on the windows at night. Several informal investigations of the expanse have yielded high EMF levels, odd malfunctions in well-maintenanced gear, and crystal-clear EVPs, while others have told of doors opening and closing on their own, of objects by moving or even floating about inexplicably, and of wafts of old-timey perfume with no source. Within the tavern, which is considered by many to be a hot spot, both patrons and bartenders have told of an unshakable, threatening feeling that descends upon the room at times, as well as of encounters with a shadow man that lurks in its darkest corners, while overnighters have recounted hearing the sounds of children in the halls after sundown when none are present on the property. Lastly, the entity of a man donning a fedora, who many suspect might just be the wandering spirit of Fabian Selwa himself, has been spied walking the upstairs hall often. Number 2. The Klondike the Klondike region, which is located within the Yukon Territory of northwestern Canada, right along the Klondike River, which in turn is a small waterway entering the Yukon River from the east at Dawson City, is an expanse notable for its hosting of the widely renowned Klondike Gold Rush of the 1890s. Historically, prior to European expansion, tribes native to the area, and throughout most of northwestern America for that matter, would trade heavily in copper nuggets, and while most were aware of the presence of gold, it was not valued to their people. People. Through the late 19th century, American prospectors would begin spreading through the locale, and following the Carmack family's discovery of gold along Bonanza Creek, within months, the surrounding landscape would become overrun with prospectors. In 1898, and namely due to the rapid influx of miners and prospectors to the region, Canada would establish the Yukon Territory to separate it from the Northwest Territories, and while mining operations would boom for a time, in 1899 the discovery of gold in Alaska would result in many leaving the Yukon, and in the Klondike Gold Rush craze rapidly dissipating. As the populations of various boomtowns declined steadily, Dawson City would be hit along with them, and while gold mining through the Klondike region would peak once more in 1903, due to the introduction of heavier equipment, eventually a majority of operations would close down. In the present, while mining of the Klondike does continue, albeit on a much smaller and more controlled scale, the locale's main claim to fame now is its timeless legacy, which draws countless tourists and further bolsters surrounding economies. Through the Klondike Gold Rush, an estimated 100,000 prospectors would be pulled to the region, many of whom would perish en route before ever even reaching their destinations. Of the estimated 30 to 40,000 to reach Dawson City, only around 15 to 20,000 would become prospectors, with no more than 4,000 ever striking gold, and only a few hundred out of those striking enough to actually make a fortune. 
Subsequently, the native Han would suffer greatly from the rush and were literally forcibly removed to reserves to make way for Klondikers, resulting in additional deaths and further discord. And it's believed this dark history is responsible for the now purportedly rampant paranormal activity experienced throughout the region, with those living in Dawson City, surrounding communities and campers, hikers, and the like reporting extreme cold patches felt on hot days, inexplicable electronic malfunctions in phones, tablets, and cameras and orbs and odd silhouettes captured in the backgrounds of photography. Across the hillside, spook lights and phantom campfires are often spied after dark and always disappear when approached, while the riverbanks are rumored to be roamed by a host of restless spirits tied to the countless who have passed near over the millennia. Lastly, the ghostly glow of mining lanterns are often spied from closed-down sites, while the manifestations of men in old-timey uniforms are often observed going about tasks from lives long since spent. Number 1. Lake LaBerge Lake LaBerge, which is located to the north of Whitehorse in the Yukon, is actually a widening of the Yukon River that measures 50 kilometers in length and 2 to 5 kilometers in width, and that was made famous in Robert W. Service's 1907 poem titled The Cremation of Sam McGee. Historically, for generations predating European expansion, tribes native to the area would utilize the region for its readily available hunting, fishing, and timber resources, and historic fish camps literally dot the lake, with footpaths leading off into the hills to other sites of significance. Through the late 19th and early 20th centuries, afterwinter steamers tasked with transport across Lake LaBerge considered the expanse little safer than an actual minefield, as it took a particularly long time to thaw. And incidentally, through the Klondike Gold Rush, LaBerge was considered amongst the more unforgiving of hurdles prospectors had to clear before reaching their gold fields. More recently, through the spring of 2009, researchers located the Gold Rush sternwheeler, the A.J. Goddard, which sank in 1901, resulting in the deaths of three of its crew members. Underwater research of the vessel continues to date, and the area has actually since been listed as a National Historic Site, albeit not one too many can readily visit. Lake LaBerge remains open and popular amongst both locals and tourists alike, offering a range of trails, various campsites, and legendary gatherings. When any of the handful of houses that are allowed up the lake shores actually decide to open their properties for such occasions. While the cremation of Sam McGee was a work of fiction, Service actually based his works off of very real people and events he experienced across the Yukon. In reality, and paralleling his poem, a sternwheeler called the Olive May struck a rock near the lake, was left abandoned, and later one Dr. Sudgeon would utilize the boat's firebox in the cremation of one Cornelius Curtin, who had passed prior to pneumonia. Additionally, several other ships met their ends right around the area. A literally countless number of souls have perished to the elements or in accidents over the millennia, and it's widely believed LaBerge's turbulent past has left its fair share of ghostly presences, with those frequenting its shores telling of spook lights sighted floating across the waters and in the skies, of mists that descend upon the area alone and on completely clear nights, and of encounters with the manifestation of the aforementioned Mr. Curtin, who is usually met walking near the wake with a lantern in hand. Also reported around the lake are orbs and half-formed silhouettes that are captured commonly in photography, the feelings of being watched, followed, or even of being touched by someone or something unseen, and run-ins with ghost ships that skirt the waters silently, sometimes unnervingly paralleling those on various beaches. Lastly, at the lake's many campsites, overnighters have told of objects going missing and only reappearing when they're packing up to leave, and of footsteps heard seemingly circling around tents after dark. Taking its fascinating and surprisingly dark history into account, and coupling it with such a chilling array of associated ghost stories and purported encounters with the paranormal, we felt Lake LaBerge was the perfect pick as the most haunted place in the Yukon Territory. Thanks for joining us for our picks for some of the most haunted places in the Yukon. If you enjoyed hearing our histories and ghost stories, subscribe to our channel, like this upload, and share us with anyone you feel could use a good scare. We'll catch you all next time.